Coinbase policy chief shares it squares off with SEC Enforcement Director Gruel. A sneak peek at the looming crypto regulation prize fight between the U.S. Securities watchdog and largest domestic crypto exchange highlights that everyone is talking past each other. This morning in a sun Apple conference room high above the streets of Manhattan, a crowd of lawyers and journalists got a preview of crypto's coming legal Ragnarok. It was the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission SEC versus Coinbase months early, albeit slightly more polite and vague than things will be in any coming court showdown. The fireside chat, sponsored by Rogers School of Law and the law firm Lowenstein Sandler, ranged well beyond legal formalities to matters of principle and theory. The latter included the question of why or whether cryptocurrency should be allowed to exist in the United States at all. This is an excerpt from the Node newsletter, a daily roundup of the most pivotal crypto news on Coindesk and beyond. You can subscribe to get the full newsletter here. In the end, the forum encapsulated the broader challenge of the crypto regulatory dialogue, how frequently the two sides seem to be talking past each other. The law is the law. In one corner was SEC Director of Enforcement Gerber S. Gruwal, who laid out his rationale for the SEC's enforcement suit against Coinbase in conversation with Rogers Law Professor Yuli Guseva. Gruwal characterized the suit as the logical endpoint of a series of clear signals sent over the past five years or more, starting with the 2017 DAO report. In any other space, if you're working incrementally, you'd see increased compliance, Gruwal observed. In crypto, we haven't seen that, so we've had to change strategy. In other words, in Gruel's view, the SEC lawsuit came down against Coinbase because the exchange didn't respond to earlier warnings. Gruel also provided some insight into the decision to pursue exchanges including Coinbase and Binance, rather than continue individual enforcement actions against violating token issuers. I have less than 1,300 people on staff, Gruel said. Every year I have 700 recommendations we bring to the commission. We can't be everywhere all at once. When we're evaluating cases to bring, we have to make judgment calls. Gruel also offered insight into other outstanding questions, including the challenge of regulating decentralized exchanges DEX. I've seen entrepreneurs and individuals in the center of all of these supposedly decentralized projects, Gruel said. Maybe it will present a challenge one day, but we see entrepreneurs at the center of all these projects. In other words, as Gary Gensler made clear at the outset of his tenure, simply saying you're decentralized is no defense. In a final notable comment, Gruel put crypto influencers on notice. In particular, he warned YouTubers and others that he and the agency are watching for attempts to exploit members of minority groups. They're promoting crypto with the promise of financial inclusion to a segment of the population that has been excluded from traditional finance. That's offensive to me, I find. That conduct to be some of the most egregious conduct we've dealt with, he said. See also how social media influencers fed Bankman Fried's cult of personality opinion the loyal opposition. Hot on Gruel's heels, though, came a conversation with Coinbase Chief Policy Officer Faryar Sherzad, who prior to joining Coinbase in 2021 served as head of government affairs for Goldman Sachs and spent time in the George W. Bush White House. On the confrontation with the SEC, Sherzad barely hedged his speculation that the SEC is stepping on an ongoing legislative process, an argument Coinbase has also made in legal filings under the Administrative Procedures Act. See also, David Z. Morris, the new crypto bill Gary Gensler doesn't want you to know about opinion, the normal dynamic in Washington, D.C., is that when the constitutional branches of government are acting, typically regulators will step back and let the political branches figure it out, said Scherzer. It's not typical that you'll see congressional action moving in earnest, and not just a government department, but a regulatory agency, rush in to redefine facts on the ground to get ahead of that. I don't know if that's happening here, but if that were happening, it would be unusual. I don't know whether there's a dimension of legislative strategy to this, Scherzid mused. And there's the chairman saying we don't need more digital innovation, so there may be some of that. That gets close to the heart of the matter. While the SEC says it's enforcing the law, the industry has struggled to make the practical case that existing law doesn't work for many blockchain-based digital assets. Scherzid further advanced the case that basing crypto regulation only on existing law will harm U.S. Competitiveness and innovation. This is not just a convenience issue over whether one industry can operate in the United States. We're at a critical juncture. Blockchain is the value layer of the Internet that has significant implications, Scherzid said, citing several ongoing blockchain pilot projects by the likes of J.P. Morgan as evidence. Even more pointedly, Scherzid highlighted that the SEC's approach may be counter to the agency's own goal of investor protection. To the extent it becomes part of public policy to push exchanges offshore, you're pushing that nexus between policy and U.S law out of the perimeter of U.S. law. That's a big deal.
This has to be a matter of national strategy, he said. If there was one clear takeaway from this warm-up match, it may be that the opponents each want to fight on a different battleground. For the SEC, it's all a matter of the law, as written and strictly interpreted. For Coinbase, meanwhile, what's at stake is a future that hasn't been written yet. Thank you